up everybody? So we're back out in the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday. And if you're new to this video series, what this is all about is a commentary based type thing where I talk about some stuff that's going on in the YouTube comment section, the Facebook group, or emails that people have sent to me. I uh, talk about those things, kind of answer questions, or I just talk about you know certain concerns or things that y'all have been talking about within those groups. Uh, then we go into uh, what we have working in the background that's either going to be making it into the videos or isn't going to be making it into the videos. Plus we'll talk about a viewer's knife, a little viewer's knife section. Then we'll talk about uh, something in the shop that I use on a daily basis that makes my life easier as a creator. I typically only talk about the things that I get that are new. Uh, we do have something that I will talk about in that section, so y'all stay tuned for that because I'm going to be asking y'all a question whenever I get to that point. Now, when it comes to the comment section or the Facebook group or kind of a common denominator thing that people have asked about or talked about, uh, the one thing that I want to talk about is bandsaw blades. So when it comes to porter, porter band saw blades, that has been the question or something along those lines that people have asked over the past week and a half or so. Uh, I don't know if a lot of y'all just went out and bought porter band saws, but a lot of y'all are trying to figure out the, the blades that you should go with, the tooth per inch, all those things. So I am going to work on that today. So I'm actually going to grab something that's down here. So, the ones that I use, right here, right there. So, Linux, these are 14 tooth branch, so 14 TPI. Uh, really like these, they're bimetal and they work out really well, they last a long time. I cut out a lot of knives with these. Uh, what I'll do is I'm gonna leave a link in the description for these bandsaw blades so if you're wanting one that you know works i've put a lot of these through the works i mean i've got two other boxes down here so they come in packages of three i go through a lot of different ones just because i cut out so many knives with my porta bandsaw and i use it to cut all kinds of steel on projects that aren't just making knives but that's what i prefer is those 14 tpi Linux blades and like I said I'm gonna leave a link for it down in the description now not an affiliate link by any means uh, if they wanted to send me some for free that'd be cool because I use them often but I highly doubt anybody from you know Linux is watching my videos unless there might be and if there is send me an email <laughs> uh, anyways so that's what I typically use I've used different uh, tooth per inches or teeth per inches, whatever you want to call it, TPIs. I've used different ones and the 14 is just what I've had the best luck with cutting uh, 1080 steel, so 1080, 1085, 1095, 1090, plus your like 01 tool steels, your 80 CRV2s, your 5160s. I've used that particular setup to cut a ton of them. And of course, I'm just using a inexpensive Bauer porter band saw. I'm not using some expensive brand or anything like that. So those blades, which are actually pretty good when it comes to the price of them, they're not cheap, they're not expensive, but those blades with that cheap band saw, and I, I knock out so much, I mean so much with that particular tool. It's probably one of the most used tools that I use in the shop next to my 2x72. Uh, only reason why my 2x72 beats it is because of the amount of time that I spend in front of it doing things like bevels and grinding shapes and doing all that stuff. Other than that, the Porter Bandsaw, that's the number one, or I guess number two, because I just said that the you know 2x72 is number one. Who's paying attention to that? Anyways, guys, that's what I suggest. I suggest those blades, and I'll tell you, if you're wanting to just kind of get into it, get yourself a porta band saw, the Bauer one. Get yourself that $50 plate that you can get from Swag Off Road and build you a little box set up. I mean, it's it's super easy to be able to set this up for less than $200. I know that some people $200 seems like a lot, but the amount of time that you save by having this tool, it it, it will pay $200 back like that. 
it is crazy. So think about doing something like this. I'm going to leave a link in the description for the port band saw, the table, and the blade. So you have links for all of that. Again, none of them are affiliate links, not sponsored by any of that stuff. But guys, go check them out. Think about getting in you know that set up because it will make your life so much easier if you don't have to use an angle grinder to cut up everything or a handsaw or all of the other crazy things that I see people do uh, but yeah there you go that's that hopefully that answered some of y'all's questions again 14 TPI uh, the brand just go with something that is got good ratings and is gonna last I've used this you know trust that as you will and if you want one, description. There you go. Now, when it comes to stuff that we have going on in the background, most of the stuff that I've been working on lately is actually stuff that's going to make it into the videos. But I do have a few things that I'm just making for the sake of making them. For one, I've been making a lot of these little, like, small EDC knives lately. I've been taking little scrap pieces and little pieces here and there. And I've just been kind of, I wouldn't say perfecting the shape, but just modifying the shape to figure out what is really comfortable. And I've got a few of them that are going to have handle scales on them and all that. But if you remember, these are the ones that I make pretty often. And by often, I mean just often enough. I know that typically whenever I say, I make these often, I get like 80 people that are like, well, if you make them so often, can we buy them? No, <laughs> no, you can't, uh, but I sell them uh, whenever I finish knives, I sell them on the Facebook page. I mean, that's the easiest way for me to do it. Uh, I might set up something to where I can show people on Instagram or something like that, but typically the easiest place for me to just put them out there is Facebook. And whenever I finish a set of these, I'll post them on there. If you want one, you just hit me up and uh, we'll go from there. But I don't, you know, I, I make those and then sell them. I don't let people pre-order or do anything like that. I'm kind of over that. I don't do pre-order things. If I make the item, you can buy it if you want to buy it. If not, I'll just keep it and add it to my collection. Uh, but uh, that's, that's, you know, just getting off in the weeds. But yes, I've been making a bunch of these little guys like this, and I've just been having a blast with them. Now, I've got one, this, the little, sketch on there doesn't do it any justice but I had asked people about a knife design that I had posted on the Facebook group and they had picked a couple other designs I am gonna make those but I had an extra piece of scrap steel and I really wanted to go ahead and make this little guy that I had drawn out I think it's gonna be really cool like I said this outline does not give it any justice it, it, it's gonna be a really cool knife when it's all said and done I haven't decided whether I'm going to show this on YouTube or not. Uh, enough of y'all ask about it. I'll probably go ahead and make that. We'll see what happens. It is pretty nice not having to film every single thing. But if y'all want me to actually show y'all this process, I'll hold off on it and I'll go ahead and film it. And we can end up doing that. Uh, one of the other things that I've, of course, working on that y'all been seeing, this guy right here. I absolutely love this. I mean, it is super thick and I love the shape on it. Now, we did do that flat grind through here and that convex grind right here. You can kind of see where the, sh the light here starts bending. That's where you can start seeing that convex grind right there versus the flat that's right there. So. Excited about that. This one is going to be absolutely awesome. And it is super thick. Cannot wait to finish these. I am making three of them. So that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I'll probably end up selling a couple of them. And I'll probably keep one of them just for the sake of me having it. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. I might sell all three. I, I have a lot of knives. But for right now, I think I'm going to keep one of them. Uh, so we have that. Now, I am going to ask y'all about this one right here. I I'm thinking about what I'm going to do for next week's uh, vlog series. 
So, or the next vlog series. I don't know exactly if it's going to end directly on Saturday or Sunday. But I'm thinking about either releasing the video series on this knife or starting this one. So uh, the reason why I'm debating on waiting on this one is because it's another Tonto. This is going to be quite a bit different because it is a lot longer and it is a full size knife. So I'm debating on starting that one right there. There's going to be a few things different done to that knife. For one, I'm using antler material. Two, I'm going to be using uh, Allen Key hardware. So it's not going to be any epoxy. So I'm going to do a sick finish to the actual steel and it's going to have a lot of stuff going on on it. But got that one then I've also got this little chef's knife well it's kind of like a cleaverish style that I'm going to be making uh, I've got a lot of the video already filmed for this so if y'all want I can do a series on this one and do that or I can start that series right there so y'all just let me know in the comment section and we'll kind of figure that out uh, but that right there is kind of what we have working in the shop and then stuff that might be coming up Josh, let me know if y'all want to see the chef's knife, chef's knife, e Eric's chef knife. Uh, I have an actual chef's knife that I'm going to be making, uh, but we're not doing that one just yet. That is going to be this guy right here. And my whole idea behind these knives is they're chef's knives that you can use at campsites as well. So, because there's a lot of people that is an actual thing where they cook outdoors. Both of these knives are going to be built for that. So they'll be multi-purpose knives that you can also use as a chef's knife if you want to. So handles are going to be shaped a little bit different, but it'll still be a good all-around knife. So we have those. But what I want to hop into now, because we didn't get to do it on the last Shop Talk Tuesday, because I had a whole bunch of other stuff that I was talking about, let's jump into the viewer's knife section. So we're going to go on this side. Bam! This right here, this is from Mike. Felon? 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 It's, it's right there. Mike. <laughs> uh, if I pronounce your name wrong, sorry about that. But this knife right here, pretty awesome knife. I like a lot of the stuff that he did here. And I like people who try files as their first knives. So this was made out of his dad's old file, which I think, again, is awesome because that's a piece that you'll be able to have for a very long time. And it's Reutilizing re something that might not have been utilized on a daily basis. So this right here, awesome. Dad's old file. He's got zebra wood and iron wood for the scales, plus black and orange G10 liners. And I like how he did the liners uh, splitting the two woods, plus down the length of the steel. That's awesome. I've done that before. It's not super easy. It seems like it'd be easy, but get, keeping everything where it needs to be does take a little bit of work. So that, plus he's got 3 16 brass pins on it. Mike, awesome job right there. Guys, y'all tell him what y'all think about that knife. Tell him, you know, give him some constructive criticism or just tell him it's absolutely awesome. I'm pretty sure he'd like to hear either way. Again, Mike, thanks for that. Guys, if you haven't yet, send me a picture of your knife. I don't care if it's your first, fifth, 150th, or 500th knife. I'd love to see it. If you're a YouTuber, leave your YouTube channel link in the actual body of the email and I'll make sure that we get that shouted out on the channel guys that's pretty much it for this video you know if you haven't yet which would be surprising because most people who watch these are subscribed but if you haven't yet bottom corner hit that subscribe button turn on the notification bell so you get notified of some of the awesome stuff that we have coming up guys get this video a thumbs up share this video or one of my build videos that I've done in the past that might be your favorite Thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending your time with me and watching this whole video. And if you thought that was the end, I'm actually going to pause for a second. <laughs> I almost forgot something. The question that I was going to ask y'all. So, one of the things that I use in the shop on a daily basis is my vacuum setup. It is a simple shop vac setup. That thing crapped the bed today. So, I've got a messy shop right now. I want to go and get a vacuum that makes sense. I'm kind of thinking of something that I can set up with a longer tube or whatever so that I can do some more um, things with it so that it's not just me having to use the vacuum to vacuum everything. I would love a little bit of uh, setup to where I can mount it to the different 
things that create dust in the shop and that way it actually sucks all the dust out but uh, y'all give me some some suggestions for vacuum setups or air setups like air cleaning setups or dust collection setups that y'all would suggest if y'all would you know tell me about that in the comment section if you have any ideas uh, that are better than what I could think of send them to my email address or go to the Facebook page and let me know there so if there's something that y'all like a lot in y'all shops let me know that so that I can think about getting something like that for this shop. Guys, again, thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending your time with me. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. And I'll see y'all tomorrow.